Disclaimer. See note below. Disclaimer. Although I am addressing the religion of one of the King James Bible translators, Lancelot Andrews, I am in no way by any means casting doubt on the accuracy, the final authority of the King James Bible translation. Scoffers and Pharisees will try to use this video teaching and blog against the King James Bible. I know they'll try it. I want to share a very short story of a brilliant man and his Trinity hangup. This individual will not list his name, graduated with his Master's of Divinity, and graduated also with a PhD from an esteemed Ivy League school. This individual graduated from an Ivy League school with a master's degree, later went on to get his PhD. This person was is one of the strongest King James defenders I've known and met, a mentor. In one of his teachings, separate teachings, he was also uh, of the Baptist church when he became saved. In one of his teachings, I saw him using the word Trinity, and but nothing about the Trinity, just saying Trinity. And I asked him, how could he be a staunch defender of the King James Bible and yet not believe in the Godhead, biblically speaking? And he quickly told me, embarrassingly it seemed, that surely God is not three persons. There are not three gods, even though he understands the Trinity says that, but he was nervous because if he were to come out against the Trinity, I believe, I'm not going to mention this man's name, his Baptist connections or his the backing he gets from the Baptist church, they would dump him like a hot potato. So I'm using this story. Why am I King James Bible only? Read the link, which King James Bible version would I recommend? And all of the associated studies. I am a staunch King James only person believer. Praise God. This has nothing to do. Do not mix up what a person's hang up will be with the Trinity or if there truly are, if they, which I have got some very uncomfortable evidence uh, about Lancelot Andrews, him being a Trinitarian. And I really doubt the man with his popish language. I don't think the man was truly, and let me say this clearly, even though he was an outspoken Christian, supposedly, I don't think the man truly lived up to the faith. However, that does not diminish, that does not take away his brilliance as a scholar in translating Hebrew translated Genesis through 2 Kings, okay? That does not take away any of his amazing scholarship and ability as a scholar. Let's be clear on something. All of the major translations before the King James 1611, which I'm going to cover the major ones, the Coverdale 1535, the Matthews translation, 1537, the Great Bible, 1539, of course, the Geneva, well-known Geneva Bible, 1560 translation, the Bif Bishop's Bible, 1568, and then Tyndale, the 1526 Tyndale. Most of these were based on the Textus Receptus which is what the King James Bible is written on. These are the ma pure manuscripts. These are not the corrupted, the Vaticanus and the Sinaiticus, but based on the Textus Receptus. The King James 1611 took 90% of its work from the Tyndale 1526. False teachers claim that the King James is a Trinitarian translation. That is a lie from hell. And they base that on 1 John 5, 7, and 8, the Jonine comma. There's a, the whole background on my 1 John 5, 7. You can read it. But to prove that that's a falsy, Tyndale himself, which I cannot find any proof whatsoever that he was a Trinitarian, he has 1 John 5, 7, and 8 
with the Trinitarian language. And what's funny, what's ironic is if you support First John 5, 7, and 8 to support the Trinity, it doesn't support the Trinity, Trinity at all, which is in my studies. My point I'm trying to make here is the purpose, the King James 1611, the main purpose of this, King James wanted to consolidate all of these different translations, which were causing a lot of problems. For example, the if you in the in the research links you can find this for yourself but what was happening king james did not like the geneva bible per se because of there was it was full of commentary from the quakers the quakers had heavy handedly just like the schofield bible the king james i it's in my study please read it the geneva bible was heavily laden with commentary king james wanted a clean pure copy and of which 90 percent of the king james came out of the tyndale bible without these commentaries like the puritans favored this one because it had this the uh, quakers wanted the geneva everyone was running around with their favorite so what king james said he says he's going to take all of these major translations that were based on textus receptus but he wanted them to be cleaned up there was a lot of print a lot of spelling, major spelling issues, and he wanted this cleaned up into one translation. Now, you can do the study for yourself. How deep you want to go into it is up to you. But again, I do not want in any way, shape, or form for someone to think that I'm trying to say the King James Bible translators were heretics. No, no. I like I said I have I will point out in this where Andrews or Lancelot Andrews was it seemed like because of heavy language he uses it seems like right out of the Vatican he did have popish language meaning of the Vatican I will point that out and it seemed he was a trinitarian However, I cannot find anything on Boyce, John Boyce, that would show him to be a Trinitarian, just like William Tyndale. I can't find anything at all. Uh, and if someone wants to email me, please, or put a comment in there, I can't find anything on John Harding being a Trinitarian from Oxford. The fact remains, the purpose of this is not to shed or cast doubt on the King James Bible, clearly. No, it's to show don't get hung up on who the translators were and their understanding of what they translated perfectly. Again, another example, there's an individual, I won't mention their name, who does extremely, I think, brilliant work in proving the King James Bible by using numbers and Bible code. Now, unfortunately for this for this man, this young man, he doesn't know the doctrine very well, but he sure knows how to break down Bible code within the 1611, proving it, proving it infinitely beyond the perverted Bible translations. And for this, I think God's using him. I think that's enough on this. Let's move on. Good afternoon. This is Andrew Sheets with the Third Heaven Traveler. The Third Heaven Traveler is a blog about our spiritual life in Jesus Christ and Him and us who believe on Him and applying this existence to our physical world. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, King James Bible. This study is comparing the religion of the King James Bible translators with the doctrine of Paul. I'm writing this because I got a comment on my video and blog titled, I love using Daniel 713 to debunk Trinitarians. I tell you, this one really fired up the Trinitarians. I was laughing. I had to delete no less than, I'd say over nearly a dozen comments uh, half of those out of the 12, at least half, were very hateful, like they were basically trolls saying horrible things. 
And the other remaining ones I deleted, you can tell the person did not read anything, but tried to start an argument saying, you've never looked at this, 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 and it was addressed specifically in the study. Now, I'm being honest. If someone comes at an angle that honestly I have not studied before, our brother Cameron or brother John, my brothers in Christ that study this in depth and sisters in Christ, my brethren who studied this in depth. And uh, that includes my inner circle prayer group. You know, we know who we are and we work and study on this. If this has not been studied out, then I'm going to say, oh, okay, let's look at this. Let's visit this. So if it has been, and I've done a study on it, especially when it comes down to persons that Brother Cameron Moshvik brilliantly laid out, if they go through and debate that without even reading it, then your comment's going to get deleted. You're wasting your time unless you want to practice typing on your keyboard. Don't do it. But if you have an honest question, and you, I can tell if you've read the studies or not. I can't. So if you say, you say X, Y, Z, or you say A, B, C, I say this, I want to say scripture says this. Oh, I'll talk to you. Now, I will at times take a comment that is so ridiculous, and I use the comment as a case study to show others. I'm not writing this for this person. This person's name is Philip Baker. I'm not writing this to you, Philip, because I know you won't do the work. And by the way, he deleted his comment. But I'm writing this as a case study, and I'm making him my poster boy to learn so others can learn from him. And so I had the video. I urge you to watch the video and read the study. I love using Daniel 7.13 to debunk Trinitarians. And Philip Baker made a comment on the video. Good for you, or good you use the King James Bible, whose translators, plural, were sound Trinitarians. King James himself was not one for tolerating heresy in his realm. Oh, what wicked days we live in. Philip, <laughs> Philip, my boy, congratulations. Congratulations. You have become my new Pharisee poster boy. You see, Philip and his kind, they walk around as when Jesus walked on earth following the apostles and Jesus around constantly nit, 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 with stupid and ridiculous comments. And every once in a while, Jesus and the apostles did the same thing. And the same thing happened to Paul when he had that woman under that spirit following him around. Just nit, 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 nit. So every once in a while, Paul would address them. And so what I'm going to do, I'm using my poster boy. Yes, you, Philip Baker. I'm going to take your comment. He made this comment. Good for you. D do you see what he's saying here, right? Oh, you, you're mocking. You're debunking the Trinity. Well, you use King James Bible. The translators are Trinitarians. And he's implying that King James himself was a Trinitarian, didn't look for heresy. So, okay, Pharisee poster boy, here you go. You're a poster boy. You're the perfect case study that they that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. Read this study. And I told him, look, you, I know they usually delete their comments for some reason, but I said, hey, you can go ahead and delete it, but I copied it quickly, and I'm going to put this in a blog and case study, which I did. And fine, and he did. I'm glad I got it quick because he did delete his comment. Now, I, I'm telling this man, your donation will teach others how fools love to broadcast their folly in ignorance. Now, here's my title of the study, Comparing the Religion of the King James Bible Translators with the Doctrine of Paul. And I think we have a lot to learn here. And I said, now, the Lord willing this work, and Lord, I submit this to you, dear Lord, that this work prove how you use the foolish things of this world to confound the wise and that your tremendous sense of humor, dear Lord. Indeed, dear God, you look down from heaven and you laugh. Read Psalms 2, people. You're going to have these people in derision, Lord. We know it. Amen. And I tell this, Philip, uh, don't run away. Here's your advanced copy just for you. And I tell him, please look for the upcoming video. Here's the video just for you, Phil, and then the others who can learn from this. I said, you foolishly opened yourself to derision, thinking yourself clever, but proving yourself a fool. Now, here's the homework. Now, if you agree with Phil, uh, this Philip, what's his name? Sorry. If you agree with this, Mr. Philip Baker, 
I urge you to do the following homework assignment. I don't think Philip's going to do this homework assignment. And I want you to email me after you finish this assignment. Now, I'm going to tell him I'm finishing the new blog. I, I just updated it here by the time you do this assignment. Now, here's the assignment. Read the following blog, and it's called Trinity is Pagan Practice of Polytheism. Now, I know Philip didn't read this. Now, in this blog, you have to go through this blog, and I, I'm telling Philip, I know he didn't read it, because guess what? In this study, if you really read the blog and the studies, you're going to see the history of the Trinity and find that the battle that raged in the early church and when the early church changed from Godhead, what the Trinitarians, they coined as modalism, and they don't even understand when Tertullian, he's the one that coined this phrase, or I'm sorry, it's not doctrine, people. It's all my studies, a philosophy stoic from the stoic Greek philosophers of Trinity three persons, but he called it God, three gods and one God, and then three persons. But uh, And he was the creator. Now, he called this to attack Sabellianism. It's all in the studies. Please, re please read it. So the assignment for you all, first of all, understand the history. Understand what Sabellianism is, modalistic monarch, uh, monarchism, and these all primarily stem from monarchism. Now, monarchianism, what this was, was they came against the Trinity because they went to the early church teaching of the Godhead, what Paul teaches. I will leave it there. Do this study. Now, it focuses in this study on when the word Trinity popped up in the second century from Tertullian and the likes of Philo, the Jew from Alexandria. What a surprise, calling himself a Christian. He hated Christ. And, but love Greek philosophy, especially the Stoics. Research in there about the Stoics. Do your own research. In this, I want you to focus on why the Catholic Encyclopedia even acknowledges that the word and doctrine of Trinity is not in scriptures, but what? Listen to this very carefully. This is what my boy Philip, the blind fool, does not understand and the silly, goofy people like him running around. Church tradition. I repeat, church tradition. I say again, the Trinity is not in Scripture. The Catholic Encyclopedia acknowledges it, but it's based on church tradition. Church tradition. Now, right now, I'm going to do a 20-second pause in this video. I'll time it, and let me get my timer going here. I want to pause this video right now, and I want you to, when I say that the Trinity is not based on doctrine, and you'll be hearing this word again, it's in the studies, but it's based on church, church tradition and the church fathers, early church fathers, starting from Tertullian, da, da, da. Now, in this pause here, find the find my timer. And ready, I'm going to go for 20 seconds. Uh, wait, starting now. But when I pause, I want you, listener, to go in. I want you to look Colossians. That's the book of Colossians, King James Bible. Colossians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. That's Colossians 2, 8 and 9. Read that very carefully and meditate on that to when I say the Catholic Encyclopedia recognizes that Trinity is not based on the Bible, but on, 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 on anything in the Bible, but on church tradition. And I'm going to let you read Colossians chapter 2, 8 and 9, what Paul wrote. Go. Okay, that's 20 seconds. I'll stop here. Now, in your studies, the reason why I want this quiet time for you to study this, if you do not totally, completely understand what Paul is saying in Colossians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, then none of this is going to make any sense to you. If this doesn't make sense, you probably, Trinitarians won't even get this far into the video, people. This is for those out there who want to learn. This is what this is all about. So let's continue. So we continue with this. 
I want, uh, you're going to hopefully see in the study links that I want in your homework that they, that's the Vatican, uh, long after about 325 AD from Tertullian's work, they weren't stupid enough to attack the doctrine of Godhead. You never hear them say we have to address the Godhead. The Godhead is heresy. No, they don't do that. But what happened, and this is how the devil works, there were people that came along, the wolves came along, they started a teaching that was totally against the Trinity, thank God. But guess what? <clears throat> they took the Godhead, which is Jesus Christ, is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. It's all in my studies. I'm not going to do the whole study on this again. And they made little philosophical little tweaks, like the Father was hanging on the cross with Jesus. And, and when you and Jesus, there is no Father. There is, and this is came with this modalism, uh, the oneness doctrine. There is really no Father. It's all Jesus. There is no Spirit. It's all Jesus. So, of course, they made it, wow, that the devil using Hegelian dialectic came from the satanic teachings of doth God, did God say, You've got two sides of this same coin. What happened is the devil was able to say, look, we have to attack this heresy. But if you want to know the truth, now this, listen to me carefully. When you really look at what modalism is and when this all came back from the monarchianism, it's closer. It, it, it is closer to the Godhead far, far from the Trinity. Trust me. But the devil's in the details. They got away from the scripture of Godhead. So, of course, they coin everything modalism, all right? You'll see here that uh, Tortillian wasn't, and again, they're not stupid enough to attack the doctrine of the Godhead. They got to go attack modalists. We're going to get the modalists. So why would this apostate Trinitarian apologist state here? I'm going to quote modalism. Now, I will say this. It was closer to the Godhead, but not still on. Might be the best expression of orthodoxy, of, or I'm sorry, orthodoxy, that is doctrine, in the second and third centuries. They even admit that the first early, early church, and it's in my studies, we're not Trinitarians at all. Remember, the word modalism, as I state, was coined for any teaching against the Trinity. Even the Trinita even those who taught specifically from the Bible that God had, you'll see in my studies and my blog links, and I display the change in the statement of faith from the Waldensians on Godhead to where, where over the time from the 10th to the 14th century, Poof, Godhead completely disappears and they start Trinitarian language. Why? How did this happen? Well, we know the Vatican's relentless onslaught. If you have not read the history of the Waldensians by the work of J.A. Wiley in the 1800s, and oh, by the way, Wiley was a Trinitarian, but he, uh, now, Wiley was a deep Baptist with the Baptist, yeah, you out there, Baptist, with your creeds and traditions of man and not after Christ. But the fact remains that Wiley did excellent research and historical reference ref, records on how they suffered terribly. Focus on that. Okay, for once that assignment's finished there, uh, Philip, I want you, Philip Baker, I want you now, If once you read and go through carefully these studies in history, so you need some background, right? Once you get the background poster, boy, your second part of this work homework assignment is take what you've learned from part one, and I want you to compare the tragedy of the religion, and I'm going to just pick on Lancelot Andrews. Now, Lancelot Andrews was one of the brilliant in fact, he's one of the, he, he was a lead in the lead in one of the translating teams, and the of the King James Bible translators. One of the brilliant men on this translating team. Now, I want you to know that Lancelot Andrews, do your own research, was among the greatest minds of the kingdom in the 16th century. He was also, and this is why I'm picking on Lancelot Andrews. Not only was he a brilliant scholar. 
He was also a man of the cloth of the clergy, both of the clergy and academia, totally accepted by the Church of England in the 16th century. Now, what's going on with the Church of England in the 16th century? Heavy influence of the Vatican. Now, in this homework assignment here, Philip, and any others who want to contest this, I want you to write an essay, about 300 words will do. I didn't put the words in here, but I'm thinking 300 words will get the basics. But if you could get into 500 words, I want you to do a research with, and cite your references on how the Reformation of England, that's the Protestant Reformation, how England constantly fought against England. But over time, the Vatican ground, had ground them down and wore them out. And that the actual so-called Reformation of England was more political, I repeat, more political than it was doctrinally based in theology. Now, that's a different subject, but if you want to give me that background, you'll get an A-plus on this homework. In this homework, I want you to discuss the true theology of Erasmus, okay? The Erasmus, the genius who gave us the Texas Receptus, and Martin Luther, Oh, the great Martin Luther. Think of Luther. Think of Luther in the Nicene Creed. Luther was a fake people. No, don't dare say that. He's our Protestant. He is the Protestant Reformation. He nailed the 96 Theses on the. He was a. He came out of people. Do your research. The man was a hardcore and he was an anti Semite. All right. But not only that. Let's be honest, he was a Lutheran. Lutherans are Catholics wearing Protestant clothes, okay? And look at Erasmus, my boy Erasmus. He was a naughty, naughty boy. Now, why did Erasmus demand that the church return to its foundation? He wanted to get, bring it back to Catholicism. Why did Erasmus, a Trinitarian, why did he hate Tyndale? Now, William Tyndale, do your research. If you can tell me who William T. Tyndale is, if you should already know this, people, he was horrifically tortured and slow burned at the stake. What was his crime? The Vatican hated him. He translated the Bible into English. Huh. Why can't we find any good teachings on Tyndale supporting the Trinity? Well, they have some fakes out there. I read about three or four of them trying to shoehorn Tyndale into Trinity. Uh, but I want you to show me where Tyndale was a Trinitarian. Now, if he was before he was murdered by the Vatican. Uh, I want to see it. But how come Erasmus? He would mock the Catholic Church in a fake Jesuit form, and I really believe it was, again, Hegelian dialectic, but good cop, bad cop. He wants you to think he's against the Vatican, but he's bringing him in the back door, just like Luther. Trust me, they would have killed both of them. They didn't. Also, I want you to focus on the Council of Nicaea in 325, known as that's where we get in your little, hey, you little Presbyterian, you Methodist, you whatever you are, any flavor, Baptist, Presbyterian, Met, whatever you are. Uh, we're, uh, we're free elevation church. You got creeds. You got creeds. And the Council of Athanasian, the, uh, the Council of Athanasian, of, and this gave us council. Uh, listen, I am so sorry, people. I'm I'm thinking too fast here. The Council of Chalcedon, which gave us the Althusian Creed. What is at the heart of these creeds, people? The Trinity. Do some work on that. Why do the Protestant churches all carry this? Now compare these creeds with what Paul talked, uh, taught and talked in the mystery. Why the doctrine of Paul warns Colossians 2, 8, 9, which I want you to read. Now go read Romans chapter 1, 18 through 24. Why is that talking about the Godhead? And what happens when man's philosophy takes the place of Jesus Christ? Read this. What, read. You know what? No, the church of Laodicea does not understand the mystery given to Paul by Jesus Christ. Oh, they do not. I have smoked out so many hyper-dispensationalists, uh, Trinitarians. I've smoked out. The workspace salvation people, I've smoked out, especially, especially the wicked, wicked doctrine of demons is creeping into the church of a millennialism and understanding what, who Israel truly is and our destiny with Jesus Christ. Guess what? You always can get them. They don't, they can't tell you what the mystery is given to Paul. 
Andy Woods, this uh, PhD, he's <laughs> he doesn't know what it is. And even he lists the scriptures in his perverted Bible. Thing. I always smoke out the perverted Bible teachers. They don't understand the mystery anyway. Because a, also, people do not, the Laodicean church does not understand Hebrews. Paul wrote Hebrews. No, he didn't. Oh, yes, he did. Tell me, what is the shock and awe of Hebrews? I don't know. I don't care. So anyway, poster boy, I want you to now finishing up your assignment here. I want you to take the brilliant Lancelot Andrews, who was probably a genius, to be honest with you, the great esteemed dean of Jerusalem chamber at Westminster's what? Popish language in his study of confession and remission of sin. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The great Lancelot Andrews. And I thank God for him, for his brilliant mind and his translation that he did in his committee at Westminster. But you should read its pure popish language. What does that mean? Out of Vatican, straight Vatican doctrine, of man, not biblical doctrine. Yes, the great Lancelot Andrews, who Thomas Voller, the founder of the apostate seminary, whose name was used. I'm sorry, I don't know if he's the, I'm sorry, the founder of. Let me rephrase that. Thomas Fuller, whose name was in the naming of the apostate seminary called Fuller Theological Seminary, states, oh, Lancelot Andrews, the in, in, the in, inimitable, inimitable preacher. What does that mean? He was impossible to imitate. He was like the one and only preacher in his way. And such plagiarists as have stolen his sermons could never steal his preaching and could make nothing of that whereof he made all things as he desired. Yeah, it's a quote. Who it was said that when Lancelot Andrews, uh, correction, Lancelot Andrews, whenever he was near King James, guess what? King James desisted from mirth and frivolity, frivolity, frivolity in his presence. Oh, he's such a holy man. And Paul said, I don't come to you with great speech and great oratory skills. I come to you with the simplicity of Christ. So this Lancelot Andrews, I don't think he's got many points, guys. Was the man saved? I don't know. I have my doubts. I don't care. So it would be interesting here. How do we do we even dare examine the lives of the genius of the Oxford and Cambridge, Cambridge University, great minds who were sought out by the king? It'd be interesting, wouldn't it? But, it, but in, you know, let's look at John Harding out of Oxford. How about John Boy at uh, Cambridge, at Cambridge University? This John Boy, supposedly when he was five years old, he was fluent. His father taught, he was fluent in Greek, writing and speaking. So, but let's stay focused on Christ here, people. Compare these people's doctrine, their beliefs, uh, honestly, their religion, which is after the creeds and traditions of man. I guarantee you, Lancelot Andrews would never want to be thrown out. He wouldn't want to be thrown out of what the religion, the religious system, would he? No, of course not. He wouldn't want to be thrown out. He's going to stay with the traditions of man. And I don't know about John Harding. I'll look him up. But John Boyd, that would be tough if I found out he was Trinitarian. But he could have been, probably was. So don't focus on the people, but compare Paul. Now, in your final, this is a final assignment. Study the Apostle Paul, widely accepted to have had a photographic memory educated by the great teacher of law, Gamaliel, and was chosen by God to reveal the mystery, who revealed the shock and awe of Hebrews. And I'll give you a hint. I hope you do your research. Guess what Paul said? There's only one God people, and that is Jesus Christ, and he is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. There's no other three persons. No. Two persons, nope. There's not three persons, nope. Read it. So here's your final assignment. You examine the life of Apostle Paul, give a full explanation of the Godhead revealed in these studies here. I'm not going to go through this stuff. The stuff is there. So I urge you, Trinitarians, be fools, be stupid, try to make commentary here, and I'll use you as a poster boy. Dear Lord, I pray this work 
bring you honor and glory even so. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Maranatha.